Bob said, I'm Andrew Josie. I work for the Open Group. I'm the VP of Standards and Certification, basically responsible for putting together the um, IT for IT um, Foundation People Certification Program. I'm going to talk about, um, obviously, talk about that program today. I'll talk about the program structure, the syllabus, the exam, how you can actually go and register to take the exam, and then wrap up just by pointing you to some useful resources. And we'll also be giving away copies of the, of the study guide. So this is what we're talking about today, IT for IT certification. We've got a nice brochure you can pick up if you need to find out some of the information about what all the open group certification programs. Um, what is IT for IT certification about at the moment? Well, at the moment, we have a foundation level certification program. So that's about knowledge and understanding. So that's about gaining the knowledge of the terminology, the structure, the basic concepts of the reference architecture, including its core principles and also the um, IT value chain. Um, the the key things to take away at this stage is that a foundation level is based on knowledge and comprehension. So it's not, it's not a deep level of understanding at this point. It's more um, knowledge and comprehension. So in a little bit later, we intend to produce a, a, a second level of certification that we're probably going to call I, IT for IT practitioner, but that'll be based on, um, on, a, on a wider body of knowledge. So these are the current marks that we've got out there. There's the, um, the, um, the certified mark, which has uh, got the label IT for IT Foundation. That's for people. And then we also have the accredited training course certification mark. So this is the target audience uh, for level one for IT for IT Foundation. So basically, this is um, what individuals would have demonstrated their understanding of, of, of the following topics. So I, I won't, I'm, oh, sorry, I'm reading out the wrong slide. <laughs> so uh, this is the target audience. And um, so it's, as I mentioned, it's about basic level of understanding. We're aiming at all IT professionals. We think everybody who's involved in IT could get this qualification. Obviously, those professionals and practitioners that are focused on instrumenting the, la the IT landscape, as well as enterprise architects, we think this would be a, ben a benefit to enterprise architects involved in business transformation. Um, also, this would be a stepping stone towards a future level two certification. So this was what I meant to meant. This is what I uh, <laughs> was talking about previously. So this is um, the value of this certification. The individual certified at this level will have de demonstrated their understanding of these topics. So this is basically the syllabus, and I'll go through a little bit more about what this syllabus is in, in, in some future slides. Okay, I'll just talk a little bit about how we put the program together. Not sure you can read this, but um, the Open Group has a certification framework, so we follow a common methodology through all of our programs. That allows us just to focus down on, a, on the particular sort of problem at hand, the particular topic. So we focused on concentrating, um, we focused on building conformance requirements and exams specifically for the body of knowledge that we identified. So this is just how we map conformance requirements. Um, we have a particular method that we can map to requirements that might be standards or it might be other documents. For example, as we spread the body of knowledge out a bit wider, as we go to level two, it might be that we include some of the white papers, the scenarios that we're, we're developing for IT for IT. Um, based on a body of knowledge, we then draw up a set of conformance requirements, which we um, we we basically break down the body of knowledge into what we call key learning points and then learning outcomes. And I'll just talk through very briefly about what that means. So, um, so we basically build up these learning units. I can't remember. I think there are nine learn learning units in, in foundation level. I'll uh, again mention those. That uh, consists of a set of related learning outcomes. A learning outcome is something we would expect a candidate to know you know, after attending a course or doing self-study. Uh, so a candidate must, pass the must um, complete the applicable learning units and then successfully pass the uh, corresponding exam, which in this case is the IT for IT Part 1 exam. So for, for IT for IT Foundation, the body of knowledge is the IT for IT reference architecture document. And we've identified a set of key learning outcomes 
um, in that document. And we actually have a, uh, another document called the Confirm Conformance Requirements, which actually basically has the table of contents of the reference architecture and then identifies which parts of that are required knowledge for level one. And then some, conversely, some of, the, some of the reference architecture is not is not a requirement for level one, and maybe a requirement for a, a future level. So here's just actually showing what that looks like. So inside the conformance requirements document, we have a table of contents, and then we identify key learning points. They have a reference number. So, so for example, KLP 3.1, that actually corresponds to section 3.1 of the reference architecture. So it's, the idea there is to have a lot of traceability. We don't, we don't want to be asking exams and requiring learning, learning outcomes for stuff that you cannot trace back to the specification, to the standard. OK, and then within a learning unit, we use a, certain keywords to actually indicate the depth of knowledge. So again, following the open groups methodology of how we do sort of people certification, we, we, we follow our methods. So for example, explain, identify. Different keywords have different sort of levels of learning. So some simple things like list something is quite different to being able to explain a concept. OK, so talk a little bit about the foundation syllabus. As I mentioned, there are nine units involved in, 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 in the syllabus. I just wanted to give you a flavor of what's in each unit. So obviously, it's, uh, the first unit is called IT for IT Overview. So really, that's the first introduction to the reference architecture. So you're expected to gain a high level understanding of what the IT value chain is and understand how the IT value chain and value streams support the IT service lifecycle. And at that, at that level, you're also expected to gain a, a brief overview of the four value streams that make up the value chain. So this is the sort of the first introductory module. Then going into uh, unit two, this is actually the definitions. We don't explicitly actually require you, you know, test the definitions. That's more a, an implicit thing throughout the rest of the syllabus. But in fact, these, these are the only definitions that you need to know. So I put these into a quick, uh, quick uh, diagram. Level three, uh, unit three, sorry, is basic concepts. So this is about the understanding the scope, the value propositions, and the typical activities of the four value streams. So this, and it also includes the basic concepts of the reference architecture including the service model, the information model, and the functional model, as well as understanding what functional components are at a high level. So again, if this corresponds pretty much to the spec. If you're familiar with the reference architecture, you will say, hang on, unit one looked like the first chapter, and this probably looks like chapter three. I'm, and uh, I think it may be chapter four, but I, it's, it's one of those. But it's, um, it's fairly consistent with uh, what you see in the reference architecture. Then we go into. Um, Unit four, actually, I think unit four corresponds to chapter three. Again, that's called IT, IT for IT core, and that pretty much reflects what's in the reference architecture. So in this unit, you'll be learning about the five abstraction levels of the reference architecture. Um, obviously, there's a lot of focus on level one. You'll be learning about the concepts for level two and the concepts for level three, and then so just an overview of, of, of the abstraction levels four and five. Obviously, we leave those for um, vendor-specific vendor implementations. And then the last few units um, actually look at the objectives of each value stream. They look at the benefits of implementing each value stream, key performance indicators, the purpose of individual functional components, and key data objects associated with a functional component. So if I click through this, this is a sort of typical thing that you might be expected to know about these functional components. You know, you would be expected at that sort of level of knowledge, and there may be questions around some of those. Okay, moving on to the exam. Um, we just have a single exam today. It's called the IT for IT Part 1 examination. Um, it's a simple multiple choice exam, 40 questions in 60 minutes, so it's fairly typical of what you would expect out there in the industry for a foundation level exam. It's a supervised exam, it's a not open book, it's a closed book exam, you don't, ac don't get access to any, any books, and the pass mark is 65%. 
And that's available now at, um, through two ways. You can either take it as part of a training course with an accredited training course provider that um, actually provides the exam as part of the course, or you can go worldwide to any Pearson View test center. And Pearson View has got just over 4,400 test centers uh, available worldwide. And we just went actually live with Pearson View on July the 1st, so that's, that's quite new. And uh, we've had about four or five people take the exam already in the past week with Pearson, with the past two weeks with Pearson View. So currently we have 77 individuals who are certified. This is a little bit just looking at the exam plan. So that's how we break down the number of questions in the exam by topic. Obviously this is sort of as we go about developing a program, we actually sort of analyze and we decide where we would like to focus uh, the questions. We come up with a plan to so make sure that every time we build an exam form that it's consistent and equivalent. Um, the actual live exam has um, two banks of, of 40 at the moment, and when you go to take the exam, it's random whether you get bank A or bank B. If you fail an exam and then have to retake, what it does is it, it knows which form you took and will flip you and give you the uh, other form next time. So looking at this, um, no specific questions on definitions and no specific questions on the IT for IT certification program. Um, and then sort of um, a lot of focus on the basic concepts, IT for IT core, and then five questions on each of the four value streams. And here's a couple of sample questions. This is for a bit of audience participation. See if, see if you will be suitable candidates here. So here's the first question here. This is, this is actually from unit one. So what I wanted to give you was just a sort of typical questions that you might see. So which of the following describes the IT for IT reference architecture? Is it A, should we have a show of hands? Is it A, modeling language for describing agile solutions? Is it B, an enterprise architecture framework? C, a process driven framework for IT service management? Or D, an operating model for managing the business of IT? Who votes for A? Nobody for A. Anybody for B? Anybody for C? Anybody for D? And D is indeed correct. It's a standard reference architecture and value chain based operating model for managing the business of IT. And I guess if you've been paying attention to all the marketing literature that we have, that would be quite an easy one. Here's another question. Uh, what captures, connects, and maintains service lifecycle attributes as a service progresses through its life cycle? This would be a, a basic concepts type question. And there, I, I won't actually go through that exercise again here, but um, the right answer is actually D, the service model, and as that captures, connects, and maintains service lifecycle attributes as the service progresses. And here's another typical question. This one is actually for unit four. IT for IT core. This is actually one of our practice. In fact, all of these are actually taken from practice questions. So, um, and the right answer here, anybody like to hazard a guess in the audience? Anybody, any takers for A? No takers for A? B, C, or D? Actually, the right answer is A, it is data flow. The concept of data flow is introduced at abstraction level two. I can see that uh, you would need to do a bit more studying here. <laughs> and lastly, here's just a question from one of the value streams, just to give you a flavor of one of the value streams questions. And uh, I'll leave that one for you to think about afterwards what the right answer is. And as I say, there is a set of practice tests available that you can get from the Open Group site. Um, there's actually Eight, there's actually two, two practice tests in this, in this set, so 80 questions altogether. And this is actually available for, I think it's, I think it's free to members, and I think it's 99 cents for non-members. So we like to keep the price of practice tests down very low, so there's not really a barrier. Obviously, we want a little barrier just to make sure that people are sensible. And, uh, but we try to undercut all the, um, anybody else out there who's selling sort of dubious questions and things. So how can you register to take the exam? I'll just talk you through that because some of this is quite new. There's two ways you can go about um, starting your registration. You can either go to the Open Group site, which I'll talk about, or you can go to pearsonview.com slash the Open Group. So that's pearsonview.com slash the Open Group, all one word. Or you can go anywhere on the Open Group site that has this 
top level menu bar and click on the certifications and then that will that has a pull down menu and if you click on take an exam that then takes you to a special page now at the moment there's a lot of writing on this page that's because we are in a migration from Prometric to Pearson view so we have to explain at the moment you know what's going on on this page but down as you scroll down the bottom this page will tell you which exams are available at which which provider and if you scroll down and, and you click on register registering with Pearson view it then pops up another page again with quite a bit of text on at the moment but uh, hopefully one day we'll uh, make this a bit simpler but the key is you, ha you can log in with your open group account so what happens is you just log in as you would do anywhere on the open group site using your single sign-on so it's the same ID that you use to access the member materials you log in it then just shows you your profile you scroll on down and then you proceed to Pearson view so what we're doing there is we're doing a single sign-on into Pearson view for you so you don't have to have a separate Pearson view account and an open group account you just go to Pearson you end up going to Pearson view after, after using your um, open group ID and what it actually does is at that point we actually send a bit of your profile across to Pearson view just before we sign you in um, and if you started at the Pearson view site all they do is actually connect you back to the open group site to actually do what we've just seen we're still working on sort of finessing that a little bit and uh, but it's our first um, it's our first sort of working um, exam with Pearson view and today currently today we are, we have four exams out there in fact we've just also put out the um, TOGAF English exams and there'll be further exams coming online over the um, over the next few months what I wanted to do is just talk you through how you would schedule your exam with Pearson view so you would here you would select the um, OG0061 which is the IT for IT part one exam schedule your exam based on your profile data it will actually suggest a set of test centers that are nearby so it pops up a little map and things Google map, Google map type thing if you wish to also seek out an alternative test center and then it takes you basically through how to book an appointment at a test center um, and then you can proceed to check out if you've got an exam voucher you're actually able to when you get to the payment screen it has all this confirm agree to the policies eventually you get to a payment screen you can also put in your voucher code at that point one of the good things I've noticed about using a voucher is that you won't, won't get charged local taxes then it just reduces the price down to zero if you have an exam if you've got a hundred percent exam voucher and I noticed the local taxes disappeared at least for me anyway because it depends on you know the various tax uh, laws and where Pearson view has an office where they pay tax customer service um, there's a lot of customer service available you can go again on, on the open group um, portal at Pearson view if you need to get any help there are phone numbers you can call there's a chat an online chat to talk to them about that test accommodation some people need special accommodations such as uh, may, might need a, uh, somebody to help them read the exam special and that's all arranged with Pearson view electronically so you can go in there's an electronic system for making a test accommodation arrangement and that's just showing a little bit more about that and lastly I just wanted to wrap up with just pointing to some resources um, again I mentioned at the start you can go anywhere on the open group site pull down the certifications tab we've got an F a frequently asked questions page and we'll be adding more and more as you scroll down this page there are actually specific questions to specific exam providers so you can find out a little bit more about um, what's happening at Pearson view or what's happening at Prometric and also um, questions about some of the IT for IT exams uh, IT for IT information resources obviously this is the, the place to start on the open group site which is the IT for IT forum homepage and um, this is the study guide so if anybody wants a copy of this come up afterwards at the end so that's available um, from Van Haren Publishing and also from sort of Amazon and all well-known retailers if you want the hard copy we also have the soft copy that you can get from the open group bookshop okay this is the list the current list of um, accredited um, training course providers I, uh, I haven't counted them all it's either 11 or 12 I think it might be 12 now <laughs> might be 13 I don't know it's somewhere around that order <laughs> and also we have an online register of um, 
of, of certified individuals. Now, I did check that this morning, and that's currently at 77. So. And we'd just like to thank our program sponsors who actually helped us build the certification program. So since these are some of the companies that actually sponsored development of, of the program, helping us to put it together. Okay, so I'd like to thank you for your attention and happy to take any questions.